Hello, this is Wes from Life Transitions, and today we're going to look at a common question that's asked. Uh, what happens when my loved one passes away? And so what we're going to do is we got the whiteboard out today, and, and we're going to just take a look at a very common scenario uh, that happens, and that way you have a, a better understanding of what's going to happen. Uh, so common places of death typically are, are these four. You have the hospital here, you have a nursing home, the ho your own home, and the hospice. Now, um, obviously there's there's a more places where someone can pass away, but most times these four are very common. Uh, and so what happens then is, is when someone passes away, uh, an authority or sometimes even the family, they'll give us a call. Uh, and when we are called, then we spring into action and uh, we go to the place of death and we retrieve that person and bring them into our own care. Um, that way that uh, everything can be uh, heading in the next direction, which means uh, meeting with the family. Now, meeting with the family, uh, we usually set up a time that's convenient for them, a, a place that's even convenient for them. We've met in people's homes. Uh, sometimes we'll meet here in the office. And uh, what we do there is we fill out some paperwork, some government paperwork. We sign some forms that are required. And then uh, we figure out our next steps. And the next step would be cremation or burial. Now, depending on which uh, route you want to take, uh, we'll kind of determine our next couple steps. Obviously, with cremation, what happens is, is that once this part is finished here, the paperwork, we can bring someone to the crematorium. The cremation takes place and then bring the person's remains back uh, to our facility here. And then after that, we just meet with them and deliver the remains to the loved ones uh, at that time. Burial is a little bit different. With burial, there's a couple of decisions that need to be made, such as, would there be a visitation? Is there a service? Maybe just a great size service? And depending on those three things, uh, we can kind of determine whether embalming is required. Now, there is a common uh, mis misunderstanding that embalm embalming is always required. That's simply just not the case. Sometimes we're able to avoid that step if the timeline and the situation allows it to, to be. And if that's all good and dandy, we have all those information there, we usually connect with the cemetery. We set up a time for the service, and then we have the service. And that's typically a good roadmap to what happens uh, when someone passes away. And if you want any more information, you can check us out at lifetransitions.ca. Have a great day.